People take a lot of care with costume and uh, with design. The makeup's always right, the hair is right, the costume's right, and so the voice needs to be right too. I'm Andrew Jack and I'm a dialect coach. And as that might imply, I teach actors to do accents and dialects in films and television. My work as a dialect coach began a long, long time ago. My father was an actor and he sent me to a stage school. And then I went to the Central School of Speech and Drama and trained as an actor. My work as an actor was particularly in sound. I did a lot of radio broadcasting for the BBC and a lot of ADR, which is uh, additional dialogue replacement. That's what it means. We used to call it looping in the old days when a loop of film would go through a, a projector and an actor would stand with a microphone and have to lip sync that synchronized his voice with the, the lip movements that he did when he shot the film, which might have been eight months ago. So it's actually quite a, a difficult job to do. And uh, this enabled me to use my voice um, in all kinds of different ways. So I was having to use different vocal qualities and also different accents to disguise the fact that I was, in, in some cases, talking to myself on the screen, dubbing two different actors. And I worked as an actor until the early 70s when I ran out of work. And I became an air steward and I flew around the world with BOAC. And I suddenly discovered I was learning all these accents. So I taught myself phonetics and uh, I then decided that I ought to be teaching what I was doing. And I was very, very lucky and I managed to um, get a place at Lambda as a, as, as a member of staff and I worked there for 10 years. And uh, in 1978, I went freelance. The first major feature that I ever worked on was Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade with an actor called Julian Glover. And Julian had to play an American character called Donovan, who turns out to be the evil one in the end and drinks from the wrong chalice. Um, I was working at that time with a group of American student actors. And when I mentioned that I'd coached Julian Glover in the film, they wanted to know what the accent was that I'd coached him in. Because isn't he an American actor? which was wonderful for Julian and wonderful for me that that had happened. In an ideal world, then I'd be employed perhaps for two or three weeks before we even start making the movie to prep the actors. Um, and then I'd be with them all the way through uh, on the set, wearing my headphones, making my notes, going into the actor after a take maybe and talking to them about where it might not have gone quite so well. And then I give any notes that are necessary to the script supervisor. And anything that we found not accurate for the dialect, any fluffs there might have been that nobody'd noticed, um, will go on the report. And with luck, the editor will be able to have a look at that. And he'll know that that was a better take um, for the dialect. So as we go into post-production, I'd be able to look at a rough cut of the film and then we could make some decisions about whether there were any revoicing we need to do. And I'd be present at the recording so that if the actor had forgotten what we were doing on the day, I'd be able to remind him of that. Lord of the Rings was just an extraordinary experience. I don't suppose it'll ever happen again. It must be a landmark, I would imagine, in movie making, in the sense that we filmed three films back to back. And it was an extraordinary experience for us involved in the languages and the accents that we created. As far as Elvish is concerned and black speech and, and so on, um, I had no idea of what I was taking on. We had very limited knowledge of Tolkien's work. I attempted The Hobbit as a teenager and didn't get very far and of course as a consequence of that didn't really attempt The Lord of the Rings. The shock, I suppose, hit me when I got to New Zealand and realised I hadn't read them. And a lot of people around me had and were enthusiastic about them. So I sat down and read them from cover to cover right the way through over the first couple of weeks. But the languages that we thought we were going to have to create, of course, we didn't have to because they're in the back of all the books, in the appendix. It tells you how to pronounce the words, how the languages are constructed, um, where the stressing comes, what changes, what spelling changes, the pronunciation of a word. And uh, it's all there, almost in an uncanny way, that um, Tolkien 
was saying, make a movie. Ashnaz Gdurbatuluk, Ashnaz Gimbatul, Ashnaz Frakatuluk, Agburzum Ishi Krimpatul. We took a lot of care and uh, paid a lot of attention to creating the accents for all the individual characters. For The Hobbits, we particularly chose Gloucestershire because we felt that Gloucestershire was West Country, so it gave it a kind of um, earthiness and uh, innocence, if you like. Um, and also because it's less like American, in the sense that Cornish, because people say, say things like, it's better if you put butter on it, whereas a Gloucester person might say, it's better if you put butter on it. So it's got the R's in it, but it's also got the T's. Um, and uh, it, it was simple and uh, almost timeless. All the characters, the Rohans and the Gondorians, we related their accents to each other but made them slightly different from each other. They're all in the same place, in Middle Earth, in the same area, if you like. We felt that they had to develop. As you looked at the map of Middle Earth and you saw where each place was, they had to change slightly as you crossed a mountain range or whatever. Black speech was all in the book. Elvish was all in the book. And yet, curiously, in the recordings that he's done, he doesn't abide by his own rules. But we felt it was terribly important for all the millions and millions of people that have followed it all their lives, some of them, um, that we should be true to those uh, rules that were laid down by Tolkien in the appendices. I can't imagine doing anything else uh, apart from what I do, because this is where my career has gone. The future is wherever it kind of leads me, so I shall follow that. I never believed that I would do this. I thought I was going to be a Shakespearean actor on the stage, and I've ended up doing this. I spend a lot of my time in closed spaces in the dark, just listening to people. <laughs>